Uh, for businesses, you mean? Uh, you mean instead of uh, just requiring businesses vaccine? <laughs> Ultimately, businesses are going to make those decisions. Um, and this is a way to implement uh, the OSHA regulations that, by the way, uh, are part of uh, what has been federal law for more than 50 years. That's why we have the capacity and the ability to do this. Uh, and we think it's going to have a huge uh, impact. It, many businesses uh, may choose the option of allowing for uh, testing as an option. May ch many may choose that they should just uh, just make vaccines the requirement, but it leaves it up to them to make that decision. If they do testing, who pays for the testing? Is it the business or the employee? I, I would believe it's probably per business make that decision, but I would uh, I would bet that most would believe the businesses that pay for that. And the president has said previously he did not want to mandate the vaccine. So can you explain why his thinking on this has changed? Sure. Well, first, um, I know he said that back in December or January, uh, so eight, nine months ago. And uh, I've touched on a couple of the components that we feel have ch have changed a bit. Uh, one is that um, we didn't anticipate once the vaccine was readily, widely available and free to the public across the country, uh, anyone who wants a vaccine has been able to get one for months, that there would be such opposition uh, to it, especially given it was approved under uh, a, the former president, a Republican president. Um, you know, the second uh, piece of this is that we um, also uh, anticipated, or, or maybe we didn't anticipate, but we knew that a number of people were waiting for FDA approval uh, to get the vaccine, uh, that they said that once it's approved by the FDA, that's what I'm really waiting for. Uh, there were more people who were vaccinated in August than July, but there are still 80 million people who are not vaccinated. Um, and the third piece is, again, the vulnerability of children of immunocompromised and other to the transmissible, to given the transmissibility of the Delta variant. We've always uh, been open to and uh, taking steps that we're going to save more lives, protect more people, and that's exactly what yesterday's announcement is a reflection of. Last question. Is he now considering mandating vaccinations to fly domestically? We are always looking at more we can do to protect and save lives. Uh, obviously, he made a significant and bold uh, announcement yesterday, so I have anything to preview, predict or preview for you, but we'll continue to look for ways to save more lives. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Jen. Uh, so just to clarify, is the thing that was preventing the president from issuing these mandates earlier, the FDA approval, is that what the White House was waiting for before There's announcing these mandates? nothing preventing, but I would say, obviously, our preference would be that the 80 million people who are not vaccinated got the vaccine when it was available. They didn't. Uh, so it's our role, and it's the president's role as the president of the United States, to continue to take steps to protect the American people and save lives. That's what it's a reflection of. Paul, what would be if, if these mandates are necessary, given the risk of the Delta variant, given hospitalizations, and ultimately to save lives, as you were saying, why, why not do this earlier? Why not do it a month ago when hospitalizations were on the rise? You know, this has been a concern for a while. Well, this has actually been building on the steps that we have been taking. So uh, we mandated, uh, mandated or testing in the federal government. We took, obviously, additional step yesterday. Uh, there were a number of private sector companies, many we encouraged, who came out and put in place mandates and requirements. This is building on the steps we had taken. But again, uh, there are a range of factors that have happened over the last several months, and it's only natural that we continue to look for more ways to save lives, given we're at the point where clearly we're in the most uh, vaccine-resistant population. Uh, and we've also seen, let me just say, we've also seen it works. Uh, we've seen companies put in place uh, vaccine requirements. We've seen the impact of those and the number of people in, at United Airlines, uh, at other companies, get vaccinated within the timeline that it's required. Uh, and, you know, that's something that uh, made sense. Is the administration considering offering federal funding to states who mandate this at the state level as well? I don't have anything else to preview or predict for you in terms of additional next steps. Obviously, we made a big, bold announcement yesterday, so I don't have anything new to preview for you. Go ahead. Um, considering the critical role of the FDA, why has President Biden not yet nominated an FDA director? He's eager to find the right person to fill that role. I would note that just like any agency, there are hundreds of people who are career employees, the backbone of the federal government, who are working every day to get the job done. And these agencies certainly continue to function at a high level, even without a director, even if his preference, of course, would be to have a confirmed director in place.